All right, and good morning. And we are back for our second of two June 2020 calls. So excited to be here with my co-host, Michelle Mullins today. How are you doing today, Michelle? I'm doing great. Had plenty of coffee already today, so I'm ready to roll. <laughs> ready to roll. And we've got Jennifer G here. Jennifer is going to be coming back to be a podcast guest with us in a couple of months. And uh, yes. looking forward to having you back with us to talk, I think, about wellness in our next iteration with you. Yes. Yeah. Wellness in the remote space. It's a hot topic right now. Hot topic right now. I think it will continue to be a hot topic. As you might recall, Jennifer was with us in episode 10, and that was all about strengths in the remote space, something that I think we are all looking at. It's June 18th, a lot going on all over the world in our different locations. Uh, certainly top of mind, though, I think for many organizations right now is do we stay in a remote space or do we transition into a new way of working with social distancing and other measures in effect. So here in Toronto, some businesses have gone back. A lot of businesses have decided, let's keep working this way. How about you, Michelle? What's happening outside your window? Yeah, that's what I hear too. Like the 50-50, they're just kind of anticipating and preparing for half their for workforce to be remote going forward. And then what does that look like with team meetings or, you know, um, you know, there's quarterly events, you know, they used to go off site. Now they're going to be coming on site to do those. To, so it's just so interesting to hear how people are um, being so innovative at this time, you know, figuring out new ways of doing life and business. Yeah, figuring it all out. And again, like today's topic, team effectiveness, our 15th episode on team effectiveness in the remote space just was released yesterday. So please head on over to remotepathways.com forward slash podcast and or just listen in on your favorite podcast player. And we'd love for you to subscribe so that every two weeks when these episodes come out, you get them delivered straight into your into your podcast box, I guess we call it. <laughs> so, Michelle, anything that you want to say before we get going? We want to welcome those of you who have made time today either to be with us live at our breakfast beverage time or joining us after the fact. I know from looking at our statistics, a lot of you are enjoying Zooming in. You were just sharing, like, what's our most popular topic right now, Michelle? Yeah, trust and connection. That is our... that is our number one right now, which speaks to so much of what's happening in the world, right? That's what hearts are longing for, uh, is that trust, safety, and connection. So it's just such a timely message, I think, and our listeners are responding to it. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen and add value to those around you. And we really are continuing, committed to continuing these calls twice a month. Just a reminder that our next community call will not happen on July 2nd. It will actually be happening the following week on July 9th. Here in Canada on July 1st, we're gonna be celebrating Canada Day. It'll be a little different than usual because we won't have our normal fireworks, but for those Canadians who listen in, I hope you'll have a great uh, Canada Day. And of course, Michelle, you'll be celebrating the 4th of July a few days later. That's right, that's right. So happy Independence Day to all. All right. Well, with that, just be back with us on July 7th. And we are going to jump in to our topic today. This is obviously a topic I think that's near and dear to both Michelle and I. Uh, teams have been the, my world for the last 30 years, and in fact, remote teams. And so we wanted to bring just a quick exercise and bring back the digital dozen. It's almost been a year since I started the writing project around the digital dozen and giving voice to what was then a manuscript around remote pathways. It's going to be continuing in a few weeks when I join the new quarantine edition of the Muskoka Novel Marathon, which will be happening on July 17th. But regardless, we've got some new shots of uh, Sujit and Joe and Ned and Sally. And if you don't know who these folks are, we would invite you to listen in to our first, I think, seven episodes when we introduce all 12 different types of our remote workers that make up the digital dozen. As you can see, our team members are together, maybe not socially distanced, 
or masked as we would ask here in the Toronto area right now, but they are together and having a conversation. So Michelle, do you wanna take us through this exercise as I let some more of our callers in right now? Yeah, absolutely. So this visual, if you can see it, it just has our remote avatars sitting around a table and they're having that team discussion. And we thought it would be fun to travel down memory lane with you and have you think about a time when you were on a great team. Um, what was happening? What role were you doing? What, what role were others doing? And what made it thrive? What was happening? Was there transparency? Was there collaboration? Was there that high level of trust? So we'd like you for you to just take uh, you know, a moment or so and think about that great team. And Jennifer, do you have any prompting questions to bring this forth? No, I love where you pointed us, right? In, in teams, we build trust, we build connection through the things we see, the things we hear. So when I do this exercise with teams, I ask them to consider what are the behaviors, the practices, and the characteristics of great teams. So, you know, we'd love to facilitate just a quick discussion around this. We'll go around the room. If you'd like to share verbally, feel free to unmute your mic. And if you'd prefer to do that via chat, please feel free to also just put it in chat. Um, maybe let's, we'll kick it off, Michelle. And like, what about your experience? I, I you know, what, what has been a, a time when you've been on a great team? What was some of the things you saw, you heard, you noticed? Yeah, and I love you asked me this question on the episode too. It was so fun. One thing that I forgot to say was conversations. There were so many conversations that were happening um, and they were, you know, some were very pro highly productive and some were just fun. You know, we had fun together. So it was a blend of both, but conversations were present. Love How about that. you, Dan? You know, it's interesting you say conversations. I, I have another C word, obviously, like C's are the, <laughs> the big wor world of my work right now with the seven C's of remote enablers. But I would say commitment, right? And to your point of like, we exist as teams to get great results, but we can't do that if we don't have great relationships. And so commitment, commitment to our cause, commitment to whatever we're creating. I think that's been a big element of the teams that I've been um, been a part of or part of the teams that I've been leading and you know in the teams that I've led remotely which has been most of my experience we've always liked to spark a conversation around um, what are we committed to individually and collectively because I think when we are in different locations it's important to not only acknowledge our collective nature but to also acknowledge that you know what I, we are a little different you know for me in Toronto it's different than you where you are and so we want to acknowledge and find that right blend of commitment. When does the collective supersede the individual? When does the individual supersede the collective? And that's all part of community building, whether we're in a community or a team or other context. So with that, I think Jennifer G, you have unmuted. What did you want to add about a time when you were on a great team? Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the pattern of the C's. and. Uh, Collaboration, I'm thinking back when I was in my um, home health days, I was in the field as a sales rep <clears throat> and we collaborated a lot with um, both our operations team as well as our clinical team. So um, I might be giving a presentation to a doctor's office or um, you know, a skilled nursing facility and I would bring some of the therapists or the clinicians with me to kind of help me with the clinical aspect of my presentation or even you know, the branch director might come and we, and again, like Michelle said, we would have so much fun. We both, you know, we had each other's back. They knew, okay, I'm not good at talking in front of groups. So I would kind of take that lead and then I would make them feel comfortable to kind of share those clinical aspects. But we laughed, you know, we'd go out to lunch afterward. So there was just a real like team spirit, um, I think of, you know, like you said, Jennifer, um, that commitment to each other, like I've got your back, you've got my back. Um, we were kind of cross promoting, um, but yeah, yeah. And like Michelle said, just a lot of fun. Absolutely. Love that, Jennifer. And again, thank you for continuing in the, the throw of the seas. And in fact, I'd say, you know, we've mentioned here conversation or communication, 
uh, collaboration and commitment. And these are some of the remote enablers. If you haven't downloaded a copy of the remote white the remote working white paper that I put out in early March of this year, definitely head on over to remotepathways.com, our resources page, and download a copy. Still really relevant whether you are, you know, all working remote, partially working remote, or other. So anyone else? Does anyone else have another comment or two they want to add in? And I would just highlight here too, I had such an aha moment um, when I was at the Mojo team meeting with Jennifer Grody this weekend. I was like, uh, I think teams, I think I've been thinking in the context of family for so long, but they are a team, right? So um, it, I saw the blend of two, you know, that whatever exists on your team, you have a home team as well. So um, I think I've been in those team waters a lot longer than I thought I had. <laughs> So. Absolutely. Well, you know, no person is an island. One of my favorite sayings from Effective Virtual Conversations. And we, we, we thrive when we are with others. I think one of the hardest things for all of us as humans in these last few months has been the isolation effect. Yeah. So with that, you know, we really want to have the best conversations and be best prepared. We are, of course, in this phase, uh, certainly we've divided the year into quarters. And a lot of this links into my writing of Plan, Do, Track, but we've been moving through a whole three months where we've had a sidebar theme at Remote Pathways and in these calls around experimentation. And to what you've just sort of shared, like whether it's home or work, and, and again, in the remote space, it's often a blend. It's like an integration of both. Um, you know, I think a big piece that we'll be looking at in the next couple of weeks is motivation. And so what motivates you, you know, like, do we get excited? I really love the fact in the last few months that, you know, as much as I always navigate this blend of life and work, um, it's been a lot easier, right? There's been less travel that I've been having to do, less appointments that we've been having to rush around. And it's only been in the last few days that it's been like doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, this and that. And like, even my son said to me the other day, you know what? I can't wait for summer to come. <laughs> We're just getting it all done in one week. And it's just like, okay, we can go back to sort of like choice of how, how much we move. So with that, anything you want to mention on experimentation? Because this will be the last time we touch on experimentation for a few yes. months, I think, Michelle. Yes, I think I'm going to have so much clarity when we step into Q3, looking back on that remote road, you know, the six month journey, I'll be like, wow. Because everything that has happened, and I'm sure all our listeners and everybody that's around the virtual table today, you're feeling the same way, right? It's just like that clarity will come. But for right now, it's just we're making this pivot, this big shift. So, yeah, I think experimentation has um, undoubtedly for, for most of us, many of us, been a big part of, you know, thriving, surviving even at times. How do we do things differently? How do we try things out? Some things work, some things don't. But that's really always been part of the remote space because we just are a space of innovation. You know, whether you've been in the space for a few months or three decades. Um, in fact, I was having a conversation yesterday with someone who started in a remote space around the same time I did in another country. And we were both reflecting on what it was like in the early 1990s uh, to really lead and be professionals in the remote space. You know, I think for both of us, we were starting out in our career and, and uh, she made a comment. She was like, yeah, and then I think about like 1996 and like the world of the thermal facts. And if any of you were like in those days, I just remember having to connect with offices and like there was always this experimentation. Is it going to work? Are my colleagues half a world away in Australia really going to get this as they come into the office the next day? So we'd invite you as we wrap up Q2 to not only think about how experimentation has shown up in your world, but also to build in that reflective pause. And it's interesting, earlier this week, I did a mid-year review, um, a reflective review session. I always like to do these, and I did it a couple weeks early so that in the next few weeks, I can drip it out to people. But really think about how are you gonna pause, celebrate, and take stock of what's happened. And I, you know, celebrate, in light of experimentation, you know, the things that have worked as you thought they might have, the things that didn't work, and the new things that you've learned by taking action as well. All right, Michelle, anything to add before we move into today's important topic? 
Oh, no, I just, I noticed Jennifer G unmuted. So I just wanted to make sure, um, is there anything you wanted to bring to the table or keep moving, Jen? You can keep moving. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get into like today's virtual water cooler talk. We've actually renamed this section because what we know from feedback is that people really love having the discussion. So last call, you'll remember, we were joined by um, Teresa. And of course, with Teresa McCoy, she brought to us the Enneagram. And why we wanted to bring in a voice like that, whether you're using an Enneagram, a DISC, a Strengths Finder, an MBTI, any sort of assessment, teams are made up of multiple people. And so in light of today's call around team effectiveness, think about who's on your team, what do they want? What do they value? What are their preferences? That really was a big theme out of our last call. Today, we're gonna to dig into the waters of team effectiveness, which actually is a whole body of work, a whole research body of work. This is an area I've been writing on for a decade now, uh, obviously been working in for three decades. And what I'm fascinated about is even though our context continues to change, similar to virtual facilitation, our context is changing, but a lot of the principles remain the same. How do we ensure that our teams are well equipped, are autonomous, are feeling confident, feeling clear on things, and also that we recognize and appreciate the diversity that exists. And this is really a moment in time, I would say, um, you know, as someone who worked in anti-racist education throughout the 90s, who is part of a blended family, multiculturally, multiracially, you know, like we want to really look at how do we harness the best that everyone brings in our unique perspectives. So with that, team effectiveness, this is our topic today. If you have a copy of Effective Virtual Conversations, check out chapter 10 on remote team effectiveness. For years, I've been using this framework with teams that I've coached because it's not uncommon for teams to say, we want to get started, but we don't have a lot of budget. <laughs> and so for me, it's always been about the conversation. How can I scale coaching conversations to impact more people? And so really looking at some of the research um, over the last three decades around team effectiveness, really wanted to pull for teams a framework, a very simple framework of what I term the six factors. Six areas are really six levers that teams can look at to say, do we have it, do we not? Is this an area we need to look at? Because all six of these things individually and collectively have an impact on how effective teams are. Now I know Michelle has recently brought this into some recent work. So Michelle, you might not speak directly to that, but you know, what would you like to say as, as you know, we start getting into the waters of team effectiveness? What are you noticing? In terms of well, I love that we yeah. started with the trust, safety, and connection um, because that that was the hub that you that you had mentioned for so many years is so, so important. That's where you come together um, because that's the foundation that everything grows, right? Even these principles, um, it's rooted in that. And it was Jennifer G and I. We just recently brought this to a team, and it was really impactful. Um, so yeah, I've. I've danced in these six blocks and I love that they're principle driven. You know, they work no matter the context. Um, they, they're just dependable um, that you can, you can anchor yourselves to. So yeah, I'm curious again around the virtual table when you see these six things, if you can see them uh, or if you can't see them, it's shared vision, shared performance measures, clear roles, shared goals, team practices, and shared commitment, which we've touched on a couple of these things. But I'd love to know around the virtual table, um, which one of these matter to you right now? Which one jumps off the page, so to speak? Hey, Michelle, it's Jennifer G again. I, you know, I think, hi. hi, I think starting with shared vision is, is huge um, because that's, to me, that's like the, the, the cornerstone. Where, where are we going? And then, um, you know, and then the other pieces kind of fall in after that, but um, without a clear vision, um, it's, it's really difficult to have, you know, clear roles and goals and things like that. So um, that, that shared vision is huge. And again, it can change. Um, and that's why communication is so important. And those like Jennifer G is, or Jennifer B, um, you know, with that 
quarterly reflections, you know, kind of looking, where are we? Are we still going where we thought we were going to go? You know, what's changed? Do we need to pivot and change course? Um, but, you know, establishing regular check-ins to make sure that the, the vision is still clear. <laughs> we're all still on the same page and we're all still moving in the same direction. And then we can sort out those other pieces. So um, to me, that's, that's jumping out. Love it. Beautifully said. I, I think, you know, we often talk about vision at the start of the year. You know, certainly if we think back to the conversations we were having maybe six, seven months ago, what's your vision for 2020? What's your vision for a new decade? Right? And, and it's, have we revisited that? Is it time? And I said, I'm pretty sure I shared this a few weeks ago, you know, again, in, in my former world of work, working with the UN and in, in disaster management work, um, we know from times of disruption that, you know, your vision is one of your most important things. Because as we look to vision, we look out to the horizon. And although things may be very turbulent in the forefront, you know, our vision can be really that longer term anchor point, even if it is also shifting and changing a little bit. So if you're working with teams right now, you're leading teams, you're part of a team, have you had some conversations around your shared vision, shared individually and collectively? And in times of perhaps, uh, as we've said at the start of the call right now, a lot of teams are thinking about, do we go back into an office? Or maybe we're in an office and half the team is there one week and half is there another week. Or maybe we've decided to stay remote. So there's a lot of different elements happening right now where, a framework like this, which is really grounded in research. So again, just to name sort of the research bodies, if you go back to the wisdom of teams, Kazenbach and Smith, if you look at the work of Wegeman and Hackman and the theory of team coaching, if you also look more recently at Catherine Carr and Jacqueline Peters' work, they actually uh, were the two first doctoral, global doctorals in the area of team effectiveness and coaching. And so there's some really great research that we can be looking at and intentionally as leaders, as team members, because again, in a remote space, we, are all, we all need to be leaders. We wanna be having regular discussions around these areas because I might not be seeing what you're doing every day. Like Michelle and I meet once a month, uh, once a week. And like our worlds are very different in between that time, but we have a shared vision. We do have clear rules, which can get very uh, murky at times. I would say that's another lever that I've seen from experience. Often where conflict may happen and, and, and we're clear on other things, it may be in the role domain. So anyone else, where would you go or where are you hearing teams are that you're working with or supporting or part of need supporting right now? Any other areas? Yeah. I think we'll continue to explore these. I think even in upcoming episodes or conversations, we'll take deeper dives into each of these areas. For sure. And I would say one thing that is probably gonna be a little bit, um, not necessarily overlooked, it might be actually well embraced, but a, a key area here is what we call team practices. And when I share this framework with others, I often get the, uh, the question, well, what really is a team practice? So team practices are both formal and informal. They're the things that draw us together, that bring us together virtually or in person. So it could be the virtual potlucks, which I've been hearing a lot of teams are doing virtual potlucks. When I wrote about virtual potlucks three years ago in EVC, people were like, a virtual potluck? What's that? <laughs> you know, we now have a whole new lexicon around things like quarantinis and virtual happy hours, whether people are tired of them or not. Like we know that we need to be in relationship with each other. So team practices, going back to like one of the best teams that I worked with every Thursday night after we finished our day, and that might not be at 5 p.m. It sometimes is like 8 p.m. We would go out to a local pub and have a drink or several. And I have to say, you know, like that was a really key part of our motivation and helping us through uh, a moment in time in the organization that we were working for years ago, where it, there was a lot of a lot of struggle internally, but our mandate, our mandate and the people we served, our stakeholders, like the work was so important that we kept it going. And we knew that as staff. And so it was really also important that we took those Thursday evenings, it couldn't be Friday, because Friday was like the start of the weekend. But Thursday nights, we'd, we'd go out to the pub 
And um, I do think that that was sort of like, a, it was reflected in the work and the legacy that we left for that organization as well, because teams leave imprints, whether you are there face to face or virtually for, for many years and even generations. And in fact, with that organization, it recently turned 30 years old. Um, it's wow. interesting to see where some of the programming, the projects, the people who have been impacted by that work have gone. And I'm always amazed, like some of these people are leaders around the world now. And I think, wow, yeah, if, if, if we hadn't done some of the things we did, which required some sacrifice on our personal level, but as professionals, we were very committed to ensuring like people have the best experience in the turbulent waters that were happening yes. in those days. And, and it, it's paid off. So, yeah. So, Michelle, what, what is top of mind as we go to sort of wrap up this piece on team effectiveness? Because we've got a whole episode, a 17 to 20 minute episode. You can listen to more on this. Yeah, I love the reflective. I love memory lane that you just went down. Yeah. And uh, I would say, yes, again, Jennifer G, we just... We just had a Mojo team meeting, right? And we did the, um, one of the things is live bigger, live beyond yourselves, can do serve for a greater purpose, right? And um, we had a celebration peace feast, like we had dinner after we did all this brainstorming and planning and different things. But yes, it's such an important element. So we did share that, those meals together. So I love that. Fantastic. So think about what are the levers you wanna have conversations around? To support you in your work, uh, just remember every episode that we have has a download. We invite you to use it, to reproduce it with the appropriate copyright. <laughs> I'm always happy to have people share our tools and just make sure that you are copying it as it is. This actually maps in, so every episode has a download. You can find our episodes, of course, at Remote Pathways dot com forward slash podcast or on your player but you will find the downloads where michelle let's direct people to the downloads. yes page. if you go to remote pathways.com forward slash resources you will find um you will find quick information to it and also just in the show notes you know on your podcast player you can get a quick quick link to it quick link so just like the puzzle pieces how are you as a team fitting together um, it maps nicely, and this was not originally planned, but somehow I must have subconsciously known this, that <laughs> week 22, we're on week, almost about week 22, week 23 of the blog. Every week, uh, I publish a blog post with a digital download, also there, so head on over. And this week is about remote teams, which excel three of the six factors in greater depth. So we've just skirted and touched on those today. We also have our weekly conversation sparker that we hope that you'll take in. So Michelle, this week's sparker is? Yes, our team is, and then insert three adjectives. So it's something fun to take forward to your teams. Maybe um, get this conversation sparked around your virtual table. So culture, team culture really has been a big part of um, sort of the focus in even before the pandemic in terms of like, who are we? How are we seen? This is a great exercise to start getting a bit more of a sense of like, what is our remote team culture? When we can't mm -hmm. see each other, you can see each other. You are known <laughs> for certain things. So what are those adjectives? And here is a tip to remember. Clarity, another C. Clarity is key in remote working success. Are your roles and goals clear to everyone on the team? We are as strong as our weakest link. And so we always want to make sure that we're checking in for understanding, that we're having dialogue. How are our roles working? Are we getting fatigued with our roles? Are our goals clear? Do they need to be revisited? So think about clarity as another C. And of course, just to recap some of our Cs today, we've had clarity, collaboration, communication or conversation. And did I say early on, there's another one that I was sharing. Commitment. Commitment, of course, commitment. Thank you, Jennifer G. So we do wanna thank you for joining us and your commitment to your learning. We hope that you will take this out to the teams that you work with, support, or a part of. Our next episode, tell us a little bit about where we're going in early July, because team effectiveness just came out. So for the next two weeks, if you're heading over to our Instagram feed, which is at Remote Pathways, or if you're over at the blog, it's all gonna be about team effectiveness. 
But in July, we change attention to head down another digital or remote pathway. And where are we going in July, Michelle? Yes, we're going to have a special guest, uh, Kim Avery. She is a business coach and she recently re uh, released a book, The Prayer Powered Entrepreneur. So we're going to be having the conversation around building a successful remote business and creating community, especially in the virtual world. So great conversation, lots of fun. Can't wait for that episode release. So as we go to wrap up, thank you for being with us. Uh, what was most impactful for you today? Jennifer G, we've had your voice with us. What did you enjoy out of today's call? You know, I think just these calls are always, um, they're energizing, they're refreshing, they just bring back to mind what's important. And I love those six factors, um, thinking about it both with our team, Michelle and I, and then the teams that we work with and how just having those front and center is, um, is just a really good practice. So thank you both. Love these calls. Our pleasure. And thank you all for joining us. If you were here and want to just share with us on chat what you took away, that would be great. Uh, Michelle, you've got a couple of things on the go. What are you focusing on this month? Yeah, so we're still focused on the guided stress relief event. Um, it's a 45 minute experience uh, Je that Jennifer G and I bring to the to your teams, your groups or teams. Um, you can find that on Remote Pathways. Again, the resource page, we just feel like it's really timely right now just to find calm and clarity in the midst of the chaos, so. Yeah, and I'm continuing with a lot of remote team days. So I work with remote teams, half day, full day, multiple days to really help them zoom into what's important. We can do that, we might primarily do that remotely. And I'm continuing the conversation around virtual facilitation. What's sort of interesting is we've moved now from the landscape of a lot of individuals getting the skills to organizations realizing we need the skills across the board. So if you need a virtual train a trainer, one that's grounded in research, but more importantly, into practice so that you can equip your entire organization with these skills, do give a shout out and you'll find our connections over at resources at remotepathways.com. And with that, we are gonna see you back here on Thursday, July 9th, whether you are celebrating Independence Day, Canada Day, or many of the important, actually many of the other important celebrations that are coming up and other holidays, please join us on July 9th. That'll be a 7 a.m. Eastern call. Michelle, you yeah. always get final words. What would you yeah. like to say as we go to wrap up? And our guest, Kim Avery, it'll be another guest community call. So yeah, invite your friends, have fun, join us at the virtual table. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope you continue this conversation. Enjoy. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.